to the celestial sphere where everyone goes in his turn. Sounding, of course, very much like Plato's Phaedo, a text that we've given a full lecture on elsewhere at LearnStrong.net. We continue in passage 7 with the IC. I see the battlefields of the earth. So all of a sudden now, we're going to go in a whole different direction. There's so many different ways. This is the point. Let's put it on our notes. There's so many different ways to look at the globe. One way to look at the globe is, of course, to ask how much bloodshed has happened because of battles in so many places. Obviously, we think about Sandberg's great poem, Grass, as we take a look at now what he has to say. I see the battlefields of the earth. And obviously, when we get to drum taps, we'll say more about Whitman's relationship to the Civil War and obviously the battles of the Civil War. Grass grows upon them. We immediately think about passage 6 of Song of Myself and, blos and blossoms and corn. I see the tracks of ancient and modern expeditions. Notice we were in the old empire of Assyria in passage 6. Now we're in the ancient and modern expeditions. That is to say, Whitman is acutely aware that the history of the world is this movement between the ancient and the modern. I see the nameless masonaries, venerable messengers, messages of the unknown events, heroes, records of the earth. I see the places of the silence, right? That is to say, all the stories. And then all of a sudden, we're back now to forests. And when you look at a map, when you look at the globe, a whole bunch of the world is obviously, the globe is obviously forests. I see, I see pine trees and fir trees torn by northern blasts. By the way, pay attention to all those verbs. It's amazing. I see granite boulders and cliffs. By the way, notice the spelling of boulders. I see green meadows and lakes. Obviously, green is a significant color in leaves of grass. I see the, bur the, the burial carns of Scandinavian warriors. Um, um, here, these lines about the Scandinavian warriors, according to Norton's, were directly developed from a newspaper clipping found in one of Walt Whitman's notebooks. Um, I see them raised high with stones by the marge of restless oceans, that the dead men's spirits, when they wearied of their quiet graves, might rise up through the mounds and gaze on the tossing billows and be refreshed by storms. Immensity, liberty, action. Uh, just Google image of where Whitman is buried and then go back and read these lines again. It'll be kind of compelling for you to see them. I see the steeps of Asia. I see the tomb of Mongolia. I see the tents of Kalmaks and Baskirs, nomadic tribes of Mongolia. I see the nomadic tribes with herds of oxen and cows. I see the tablelands notched with ravines. I see the jungles and deserts. I see the camel, the wild steed, the bustard, that crane-like, um, um, uh, almost uh, bird, uh, crane-like bird, um, grass bird, right? The fat-tailed sheep, the antelope, the burying wolf. We saw this in earlier poems when he started listing all the different animals. And then all of a sudden we're back to land again. I see the highlands of Abyssinia, obviously Ethiopia. I see flocks of, of goats feeding. I see the fig tree, the tamar, this African fruit, right? I, uh, the date. I see the fields of teff wheat, the um, Abyssinian uh, grain plant and places of verdure and gold. So in other words, he's, he's trying to capture the huge expanse of the world and of nature. Uh, and now we're gonna get to people who do certain jobs, right? I see the Brazilian vaquero, the cowboy, right? I see the, Bolveri, uh, the Bolivian ascending Mount Sorta uh, in Western uh, Bolivia, the Andes. I see uh, the uh, Wacho, a member of uh, uh, the, uh, um, the ancient Indian tribe in Texas, crossing the plains. I see the incomparable rider of horses with his lasso on his arm. Uh, the, the mythology of the cowboy of the West will, of course, just start to be growing in 1855. Whitman, of course, will have something to do with that. I see over the pampas, now all of a sudden we're to grass. I can't shock us given what we've read in Leaves of Grass so far. The pursuit of wild cattle for their hides, and immediately we think, of course, of, uh, of the buffalo, right, um, as, as we've already spoken about it elsewhere. And, uh, and then now we come to, uh, to Section 8. Um, Norton's reminds us, that in 1881, Whitman excluded a former Section 8, transposing seven of its eight lines to a Pominock picture, which we'll meet later in Leaves of Grass. Former Section 9 then became Section 8, and the number 9 was canceled from the sequence, and this will explain why we're going to go from 8 to 10. I see the regions of snow and ice. All of a sudden, here we are, back again, playing the same game, right? Um, I see the large-eyed Samoyed and, and the Fen, uh, the Samoyed's uh, Neo-Siberian um, tribe in the region of the Altai Mountains. Not any way readers of Whitman's day would have any idea what that was about, right? I see the slave, uh, I'm sorry, I see the seal seeker 
in his boat, posing his lance. I see the Siberian on his, on his slight built sledge, drawn by dogs. I see the porpoise hunters. I see the whale crews of the south. Obviously, we think of Melville's Moby Dick. Pacific and the North Atlantic. I see the cliffs, glaciers, torrents, valleys of Switzerland. I mark the long winters and the isolation. It's interesting he would use the word isolation, uh, given what we said about his history. And then all of a sudden, from there, we move to the cities. I see the cities of the earth and make myself at random a part of them. Do you remember what we said in uh, our study of once I pass through a populous city and children of Adam, go back and look at that poem and, and, and then read this line again. I am a real Parisian. Now, all of a sudden here, he's going to go to the great cities, right? A lover of cities. I am a habitant of Vienna, St. Petersburg, Berlin, Constantinople. Of course, these are some of the great cities of the world uh, uh, today, uh, Constantinople, Istanbul. <clears throat> I am of Adelaide, the capital city of Southern Australia. Sydney, Melbourne, so now we're going to get to Australia. I am of London, Manchester, Bristol, Edinburgh, Limerick. I am of Madrid. <clears throat> Notice this I am, I am, I am, five of them. I am of Madrid, Cadiz, Barcelona, uh, Orpoto, uh, Portugal, right? Lyon, Bruce, Brussels, Bern, Frankfurt, Stuttgart, Turin, Florence. Just moving all over the major cities of, of Europe. I belong in Moscow. By the way, let's remind ourselves. Whitman never traveled, really, to any cities, right? I mean, he spent a little time in New Orleans, and other than that, I mean, it's pretty much that was it. Out to Denver briefly, right, uh, as we've said in earlier lectures. From I am, he then goes to I belong. I belong in Moscow, Krakow, Warsaw, northward in Christine, or Stockholm, or in Siberian um, Iker, Ikertosk. Or in some street in Iceland, I descend upon all those cities and rise from them again. Of course, these echoes of descending and rising were all together familiar with. And then from there to passage 10, for reasons we already said, I see vapors ex exhaling from unexplored countries. I see the savage types. Now, this word, use of the word savage is going to disturb us, obviously. The bow and arrow, the poison splint. The fetch and the, and the obi, the sash. I see African and Asiatic towns. I see Algiers, Tripoli, Dern, uh, Mogador, uh, Timbuktu. Of course, that became probably the most famous um, exotic listing in all of this poem, right? Moravia, notice there's six of those. I see the swarms of Peking, Canton, Benares, Delhi, Calcutta, Tokyo, another, another listing of six. I see the, uh, the uh, crewmen. Um, uh, Liberia, West Africa, in his hut, the Doman and Ashtani man in their huts. I see the Turks smoking opium in Aleppo. It's an interesting uh, just glimpse, right, that he will have, right? I see the picturesque crowds at the fairs of Kiva, and now we're in Uzbekistan, and those of Herat in northwest Afghanistan. I see Tehran, obviously to Iran. I see Muscat and Medina, Oman, uh, of, uh, Oman and, 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 and Arabia, right? And the intervening sands. See the caravans toiling onward. I see Egypt and the Egyptians. I see the pyramids and obelisks. Now, all of this, this Egyptology stuff, is going to have a lot to do with Dr. Henry Abbott's display of Egyptian antiquities in 1840. Um, you'll remember that we even had a reference in Song of Myself, Passage 6, about the grass being a uniform hieroglyphic. Notice I see Egypt and Egyptians. I see the pyramids and obelisks. I look on chiseled histories, records of conquering kings, dynasties cut in slabs of sandstone or on granite blocks. I see at Memphis mummy pits containing mummies embalmed, swathed in linen cloth, lying there many centuries. I look on the fallen the um, Theban, the large bald eyes, the side drooping neck, the hands folded across the breast. And then from here, we jump to the outcasts. I see all the menials of the earth laboring. It may be that he just mentioned pyramids, and he knows that, of course, lots and lots of slaves had to work hard to build those pyramids. I see the prisoners in the prisons. I see the defective human bodies of the earth, again, for the second time. And again, we'll come back to this discussion in Song of the Open Road, the poem to follow here. The blind, the deaf, the dumb, idiots, hunchbacks, lunatics, again, at a list of six. The pirates, thieves, betrayers, murderers, slave makers of the world, uh, five, right? The helpless infants and the helpless old men and women. And then he finishes passage 10. I see 
male and female everywhere. I see the serene brotherhood of philosophers. I see the constructiveness of my race. I see the results of the perseverance and industry of my race. In other words, he's going to celebrate the hard work that it takes to build civilization. I see ranks, colors, barbarians, one of his favorite words, civilizations. I go among them. I mix indiscriminately. And, now to the title of the poem, I salute all the inhabitants of the earth. Now we pause at passage 10 to pick up with passage 11 because that's the you passage that we'll be talking about next. Let's just finish quickly at 2a. Well, obviously for Whitman at 2a, the major message here is the world is such a remarkable place when you start looking at it from multiple perspectives, right? At 2b, of course, the repetition again, 94 times we just read it, I see, I see, I see. At 3a, there's so many texts that can come to mind here, but I'm just going to throw passage to India at you. Not just um, Whitman's poem, Passage to India, but of course E.M. Forrester's great novel, Passage to India as well. Finally, at 3b, to somehow make this your own, of all the places that he lists, which one for you is the one that you would love to see? Which one for you would be your favorite to go and visit? Come back with us and we'll continue with Passage 11. Thank you.